How many of you will want to be a missionary? Ooh, ooh, a missionary to be good. Anywhere God tells you to go, that's great. Clap for her. Who else raised up his hand? Who did I see? Yes, James, a missionary to be a missionary to your school. Yes, you can be a missionary in your school. Good. Good. And then Mazi, in your neighborhood, very good. We can be missionaries anywhere God has placed us. Is that clear? Yes. Eh? And those of you that didn't raise your hand, maybe you want to start praying for missionaries. Do you? Eh? Are we promising we will pray for them? Yes. So by the time Mercy, James, and the uh, marvelous they go and uh, yes they go on missions will be at home praying for them isn't it yeah. eh? okay and then you can be a professional missionary what, what did i say you can be a professional missionary. that means you can be a doctor you can be a nurse you can be a teacher and still be a missionary so it doesn't mean that when you're a missionary you are not working is that clear now, our story today, I'm going to tell you about one important lady who was just a child like you, but as she kept growing, God called her into a special mission. God called her into a special mission. mission. And her name, can you read for me? Florence Knighton. Florence Nightingale, Florence Nightingale, and she was born in May 12, 1820, May 12, 1820. Florence's parents were very rich. They were aristocrats in, in, in England. Great, rich people. The, the father had a lot of estates. You know estates now, a lot, and so they, he was so rich. And one of the times she, he traveled, he loved traveling with his wife. One of the times they traveled, they gave birth to Florence in a town called Florence. Yes, in Italy. And that was why they named her Florence. Why did they name her Florence? Because she was born in a town called, called Florence. Florence. And the father's name was William Nightingale. William what? Nightingale. Nightingale. So we have Florence Nightingale and her sister called Pat. Now, the parents were quite rich and they loved traveling all over the world. Not only do they, did they travel, they always hosted parties, dinner parties. They would just say, oh, this evening, they will invite their cousins, invite their friends, 
and the Florence mom will host them and dad will host their friends to a dinner. And whenever they have that dinner, people will always come just chatting, eating, laughing, dancing. And one of these nights, Florence's sister called her, Florence, Florence, the visitors are here, the guests are here, come down. And Florence went reluctantly because she was never ever so happy with such parties. She loved being on her own. Now, one, one day she was just in her room, so sad. Look at her here. She was sad. And why was she sad? She kept thinking. She didn't know why God has called her. She was not sure. She just, she, was, she kept wondering, why is my sister always so happy about the party? And me, I'm never happy. What is wrong with me? Is there anything wrong with me? And then one day, while she was sleeping, she heard God speak to her. And God called her and said, Florence, I want to use you for something special. But God did not tell her what he wanted to use her for. And that made Florence more sad. She didn't know what God wanted to use her for, but she just knew God wanted to use her and God did not want her to join those parties. At a time when she was older, a man started coming and the man wanted to marry her. And they were together. The man believed Florence was going to marry him. They were friends for seven years. But at the end of seven years, Florence told him, you know, that she didn't want to be friends with him again. She didn't want to get married to him again. She didn't know what was wrong in her heart. And she told the man, you're a very good man. And I don't want to make you unhappy because in my heart, I don't feel God is asking me to get married. And the man left and Florence stayed there, still sad, not knowing what God has called her to do. And so one day, Florence just stayed like this. One evening, she was so sad. She started remembering her childhood when she was just a small child. She remembered that she used to love it when she was still a small child because she used to go with her mom to the poor people in the villages, you know? And whenever she went there, giving them vegetables, giving them food, giving them everything, she was always happy to do that. So Florence remembered and said, why was I so happy that time? And why am I so sad now? Do you get sad at times, children? Yes. What makes you sad? When they offend you, uh -huh. what else makes you sad? When you think of something bad. Like? She said when she thinks of something bad, like? Okay, yes? When somebody dies. Good. But in Florence's case, it was none of these things you mentioned. She just wanted, she knew God wanted her to do something. But she just didn't know what God would have her do. She wanted to know God more. She didn't know how to get to know God better. Do you sometimes feel sad that, oh, I wish, I wish I can pray better and I don't know how to pray. Do you feel that sometimes? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, we are going to see what Florence did before God answered her. She remembered another time she took care of a dog a dog that was stoned and had broken leg and the owner, owner wanted to kill it. But Florence, even though she was young and eight years, she went, took care of that dog and the dog was he killed. Their, their father wanted them to be in good people, learned people. And so the, the father started a class in the house teaching them languages, French, German, Spanish, arithmetic and other things their own father taught them i hope your mom and dad teach you at home they should if they don't so florence learned to be not just a lady but she could read she could read 
but their mom did not like that praise the lord Hallelujah. and so one day florence was so sad she didn't know again what to do she had read a lot of books read books on nursing and everything yet was not sure of what god was asking her to do so one day she knelt down by her bed and she started praying and saying god please you've been talking to me this time she was 30 years now right from the time I, I was young you've been talking to me but what do you want me to do god what do you want me to do god so she prayed and in her heart she felt she was not a good person so she asked jesus to come into her heart she asked jesus to forgive her come into her heart and save her from her sins and she received jesus jesus christ died for you and me so that we will not be bad children any longer and so he wants you to ask him into your heart like Florence Nightingale so that your life will be good. It was while she was praying in this place that God told her he will want her to take care of the sick people. He will want her to be a nurse. Florence was not sad. Before this time, hospitals were so bad in, in England smelling you will see doctors blood will stain their body blood on the walls so smelling everything was bad so when florence decided to become a nurse to go to the nursing school the parents were not happy the mother started crying but florence said i must obey the lord can we say that i must obey the lord again i must obey the lord florence eventually obeyed god and instead of the, the, the hospitals being so dirty like this and filled with blood like this, Florence Nightingale made nursing a, a profession a better one. She started cleaning up, gave them good bed, good uh, 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 bed sheets, cleaned up the walls, made the nursing profession a respectable one, not with fat women who would be and getting drunk he made it she made it attractive that was what god called her into so that she can repair the nursing profession and make it what it should be florence was so good that she was recognized in the country she was recognized by the queen and they gave her a special honor they gave her a special honor as the nurse look at she was always called the lady with the lamb because she would always go there to take care of the sick people she was given a honor she was honored by the queen of england and in 1910 florence laid down on her bed and died she went to be with the lord now florence was a child who grew up and god used her because even as when she, as, as young as she was just just like each of you she wanted to serve god she wanted to do what god wants her to do and when she was old enough god told her what he wanted her to do even though you are young now you can have a missionary heart you can say god i want you to use me when i grow up I want you to use me. And when it is time, God will use you. Do we want to ask God to use us? Yes. Like Florence Nightingale? Yes. And then one time later, people will hear that you served God. Do you want that? Yes. Let's bow down our heads and tell God. Tell God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now sit up. A question? A question? Yes, quickly. She didn't marry. She didn't get married till she died. She devoted her life to serving God and humanity. Yes. When she comes out every night with the lamp, is it the battlefield she goes to? Even when she was at the battlefield, the Crimea War, and in the hospitals, you know in those days they didn't have electricity so the lamp was to check on her patient to make sure are you feeling fine are you good this night she was so kind to her patient 
she was not the shouting, shouting nurse. And I'm sure in all our professions in the future, we will be kind, isn't it? May the Lord help you to be. Praise the Lord. So now, we are moving to the nurses' station. How many of you have been to the hospital before? You've been treated by a nurse? Have you? Okay, now we are going to the nurses' station, and we are going to hear our nurse there. Mommy Baba Tunde, speak to us. Tell us what nursing is all about. Shall we stand up and we go as we sing our song? I'm a missionary helper, praying every day. How are you? Yeah, fine. Daddy and mommy? Fine, thank you. Ma. You are welcome. We thank God for another opportunity to come together, to come and continue our learning on Florence Nightingale. Who was she? Can you remember whom you were told she was? She was the founder of nursing profession. Hmm? Nursing is very, very good. Hmm? As a nurse, if you are seeing me like this, who am I? A nurse. And it is a noble profession for anyone that loves God, for anyone that wants to care for people that need care. If you are a nurse, either a lady or a man, you have free access to help people. This is our brother, Brother John. He's also a nurse. I decided to bring him so that the boys that are here will know that nursing profession is not just for girls. If you are a nurse, you have so many advantages. So many advantages. One, it gives you access to both great and small in the society. That is, if you are a nurse, even governor, even president, even members of your family, they look for you. Pastors are very important, but they stay in the church and people come to meet them. Is it not so? How many do they know about people that comes to church? Few. For you as a nurse, the person may be at home, and the person will call you. No matter how tight the security in a house, as a nurse, you have free access because the person needs your care. As a nurse, you have some primary things here. Who knows what this is? Blood pressure apparatus. Good. The same thing with this one. Many years back, this was what was being used. We still use it now, but now we have digital blood pressure. We use it to measure BP and you tie it on the upper arm. We call it sphygmo manometer. We have stethoscope here. You also use it as a nurse. Sometimes you want to pick the heartbeat of a child. You cannot reach it. Sometimes you want to listen to the chest of both children and adults. You use this one. You can demonstrate how it is being used. Can you hear anything? Good. So if you put it on the chest the same way, you hear the breathing and the heart beat. Another good opportunity is it, present, it allows you to present Jesus Christ to the lost soul. Somebody who is sick needs help by all means. The person just wants to be well. The person you cannot preach to ordinarily. If the person is sick and comes to you, because you are a Christian nurse, you are able to take care of that person better than the way any other body 
or any other person will take care of that uh, sick person. If you are a nurse, you have the privilege to correct some wrong things that you have been hearing. If I have time to ask each of you, how many of you want to be a nurse? Some people may say no. And if I ask why, they have one reason or the other. Maybe they've heard that nurses are bad, or nurses beat people, or they give injection and it's painful. For you, as a Christian nurse, you'll be able to correct certain things that the society are complaining about nurses. Are we together? If you're a nurse, you radiate the glory of God. You dress neatly and you smile. You smile with people. You, you are cheerful to people. And people will say, ah, this nurse is good. Ah, this nurse is good. But are you the one that is good? It is Jesus Christ that is in you. And that Jesus Christ in you, as a Christian nurse, differentiates you from other people. Then it brings good opportunities to you in the society. You may just be sitting not knowing what is happening. They will just call you. Oh, please, can you help us to come and attend to so, so person? Quick, quick, you go there. And that is why I'm here today. It is a privilege because I'm not the only nurse in the Anglican communion. But because our mommy must have seen that Jesus Christ dwells in me. And I can also impact it on you. She invited me to come and speak with you. And so, Jesus' children, I don't know what you have heard about nursing, nursing profession. Florence Nightingale started this nursing profession. I told you she was the mother and the founder of modern nursing. In her own time, there was war. And who would want to go to where there is war? Nobody, but she volunteered with few other people with her. And they went. In the night, she would get up and use lamp to look for people that are very sick. You know, in the night, what do people do? They sleep. But Florence Nightingale was not sleeping. He was going from one camp to the other, from one bed to the other, looking for those that are really wounded and could not sleep. And she gives them the care. And from generation to generation, nursing profession has been on. Right from the time of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ went about doing good. If you look at your Bible in Mark 10, 46 to 52, and Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus Christ was going about doing good. His disciples were going about healing the sick. And we have from Genesis to Revelation, nurses being mentioned one time or the other. You remember the Hebrew nurses? Who refused to do what? Who, who refused to do what? Good. Who refused to kill the male children? A nurse that is a non-believer will do it because he or she needs money. But they, they did what? They feared God. And so, children of God, have it in mind to develop interest in nursing profession. It gives you access to do the will of God. In the one, one minute, I don't know if Brother John has anything to do or we just round up. Why it comes up, what is this one? The first aid box. Yes, inside the first aid box, you have certain things that you need immediately when you see someone that is sick. So, once you hear that somebody is sick and you carry this, you are ready to walk. So, brother, you have just one minute to say something to them. Actually, nurses have many responsibilities to do in the world. They, you know, some people believe that a nurse just give an injection and assist a doctor. Their work is far more than that. You know, nurses have many responsibilities, ranging from such, uh, ranging from giving injection, taking care, counseling, you know, 
uh, the the cancer patient they advise them they also they are the communicators you know when a patient come to the hospital sometimes because they don't know anybody in the hospital the first person that is compassionate and is kind to you that will give you direction on what to do and how to go about it it's a nurse you know they so there are patients who cannot talk for themselves the nurse talk for you you see so the nurse also educates you on what to do what to eat what, how to go about and in order to improve your health there are many things that a nurse also do you know the nurse also teaches you it teaches you things that you ought to do that will prevent prevent illness from getting you it also teaches you how you can keep your environment clean there are many responsibilities they also dresses your wound you know they do also suture when somebody had an accident you know the nurse also suture your wound there are many things they conduct delivery they do many things so it's not just only giving injection or assisting the doctor no the nurses also are on their own part yet they work together with doctors and uh, and other health personnel praise god hallelujah amen thank you very much what is this body thermometer it is still the same thing infrared thermometer you use it to do what to check body temperature the advantage of this is that you don't need to get too close to the patient now that we are practicing social distance you just just less than a meter i've taken the temperature but this you will have to lift up the armpit and put it and wait you take it from one person to the other what are you doing you are transferring the pressure so that's why we don't use this one as we were using it before and as you progress you learn what you should be doing and what you should not be doing don't insist that oh this is what i will use this, that is what i've been using no there is changes but as a child of god at every change you pray that god will glorify himself in that change whatever care you render to people always pray that god will heal the person that is what makes you a different nurse so for you boys don't insist on being a lawyer or, or a doctor or whatever you can also be a nurse and be a nurse and god will bless you praise the lord any question one or two concerning nursing profession or Florence Nightingale, the founder of nursing. See her picture here, looking so neat and beautiful. Embrace God's mandate, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We thank our teachers. We thank everyone that is here.